Good morning, children. How are you guys doing today? Are you ready for room time? Great. Grab a chair and let's get started. Who can tell me what day today is? Very good. Happy Tuesday, everybody. When the weather has been so nice and sunny and warm. And if today is Tuesday, yesterday was Monday. And tomorrow will be very good. Tomorrow is Wednesday. Tuesday is the second day of the week. Let's quickly do our days of the week. We have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That is seven days in just one week. Can you remember that yesterday we spoke about phonics and what they are? Can you still remember what they are? Very good. They are the sounds that the letters of our alphabet makes. Let's quickly have a look. At a fun video that has that explains phonics to you, and then we're going to come back and work our theme. Hi, kids! What do you want to be when you grow up? A. 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 a astronaut. A. A. I, I, J, 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 Jockey, J, J, K, Karate Instructor, K, K, L, 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 Librarian, L, L, M, M, mm. Car driver. Technician X X Y yeah, yeah, yeah. Yoga instructor Y Y Z Z Zookeeper Z Z Well, what 
wasn't that fun. But hey guys, can you remember what our theme for this week is? Very good. Our theme for this week is the different jobs that people do and the people who help our community. Have you thought about what you would like to be when you grow up? Well, if you look at the care package that your mommies and daddies got, there is a picture of a person. There's an outline for you, just like this. And what I would like you to do is please make a picture of what you would like to be one day and then ask your mommies and daddies to please send the photo to me. I would love to see what they look like. Something else that I added in the packages just for fun was this picture. And then there's a bunch of small little pieces of paper in an envelope. If you could please take it and make a collage for me. Can you remember how to make a collage? Of course you can, you guys are too clever. But I'm going to explain it to your mommies and daddies just in case, okay? You're going to take glue and take your small pieces of paper and you're going to make a pretty colourful picture on this. So as you know, our theme for this week is the different jobs that people do and the people who help our community. So I thought today I would tell you guys a bit about doctors because doctors are very, very important, especially in the time we are in at the moment. Because doctors are people who help people who are sick. And did you know that children are so special that, that there is a doctor who takes special care of children? It is called a pediatrician. You also get many different kinds of doctors. You get a GP who is a general practitioner and they help you if you have a cold or a flu or a runny nose. Then there's a dentist. That's a teeth doctor. You also get a dermatologist and that's a doctor who takes care of people who have skin problems. So if you get a rash on your skin, you go to the dermatologist. You get an optometrist. Can you think of who an optometrist is? What kind of doctor do you think they are? Very good! Optometrists are eye doctors. They specialize in helping people with eye problems and if you maybe need glasses or struggle to see, an optometrist will help you out. You also get a cardiologist. A cardiologist is a doctor who specializes in helping people's hearts. So if your heart might not be working as well as it should be. You would go and see a cardiologist. You also get a doctor who specializes in people's brains. They are called a neurologist and they help people who maybe have problems with their brain. Let's have a look at what my book has to say about doctors. Being a doctor is a very important job. Doctors help people who are sick. They also treat diseases and help us to stay healthy. Seeing a patient. GPs are local doctors. They treat everyday illnesses. If a patient has a serious disease or problem, the GP sends him or her to the hospital or a specific doctor. Seeing patients in their homes. Sometimes patients are too ill or too old to go to the doctor. The general practitioner 
which is long for GP, will go to a person's house to go and visit them and help them there. Seeing a patient at the hospital. Hospital doctors treat emergencies and serious health problems. Lots of doctors work in the hospital. So you get all different kinds of people going to the hospital. So you need all different kinds of doctors to go and help the people. The doctors who do surgery. People who are ill need medicine, they visit the GP and then get referred to surgery. Some surgeries have one GP and others have several. Wow! The receptionist makes the appointment for the patient. The patient tells the receptionist why they have arrived or use a self-check-in machine. Then they wait in the waiting room to be seen. Oh, I hate the waiting room. It always feels like it takes forever to go see the doctor. Daily life. At the surgery, the GP sees as many as 30 or 40 patients every day. Each appointment lasts about 10 minutes. Wow, between 30 and 40 people a day? Oof. GPs have a really hard job keeping all of us healthy. The doctors ask the patients questions to work out what is wrong. Once they know, she might give the patient a prescription for medicine that will help them to get better. Have you ever been to the doctor? I'm sure you have. They always check your chest with a stethoscope. Let's see. There is the stethoscope. They always look into your ears and they take your temperature and they look into your mouth and nose. A doctor's kit. The doctor uses all sorts of different tools, machines and other equipment. These things help the doctor to do their job. They use a computer to know who's coming to visit them. They have an examination table. The doctor's room has a special bed in the corner where the patient lies down to get examined. Scales to weigh a patient. Do any of you know why they weigh you? It's not just to see if your weight is right for your body. It's also certain kinds of medicine gets determined by your weight. So they need to know how much you weigh so that they give you the right amount of medicine. Bandages to protect your wounds. A throat stick and latex gloves. The doctor puts the latex gloves on and uses the throat stick to press your tongue down to see the back of your throat. A blood pressure thermometer. The doctor puts a special armband on the patient and pumps it full of air to check if the patient has high or low blood pressure. Nurses. Nurses are also very, very important. Nurses are a big help to doctors. They work in surgeries, clinics and hospitals. Some visits patients at their home. Giving vaccinations. Vaccinations protect people against diseases. Baby, babies have them to fight off measles and other illnesses. Testing for asthma. Nurses ask patients to blow into a machine called a spirometer to work out if they have asthma or not. Taking out stitches. Have any of you had to get stitches before? Stitches help a wound to heal neatly. Some must be removed by a nurse while others dissolve on their own. Taking blood. Nurses take blood samples from patients. These are tested to find out about the patient's health. 
Changing a dressing. Bandages hold dressings in place while wounds heal. The nurse puts on a new bandage every couple of days. Cleaning ears. Ear irrigation gets rid of wax that can block up a patient's ears. The irrigation is filled with warm water. The human body. Can you remember the facts around a human body? We haven't learned about it that long ago. The human body. The doctors need to know all about it and how it works. They need to study it for years and years. They need to learn the name and the jobs of every body part. Wow, that is a big job. Hospital and specialists. Some hospital doctors are experts in some kinds of diseases and parts of the body. They are called specialists. All their patients have similar needs. Pediatrician. This doctor helps babies and children. Children's bodies are different from adults' bodies. Pediatrician specializes in children's health. Orthopedic surgeon. This doctor is a bone expert. He uses x-rays to look inside the body and see the bones. He treats broken bones and bone diseases. Ear, nose and throat specialist. This doctor treats patients who have diseases that affect their ears, nose and throat. She uses an endoscope which is a tube with a video camera attached to it to see inside the nose. Oh wow. And can you still remember that the ear, nose and throat is all connected to each other? The operating theatre. The operating theatre is where patients have operations. The doctors who carry out operations are called surgeons. They need to scrub down, which means they wash their hands very, very well and up to their elbows. They have to put on marks and gloves. In theatre, before the surgeon operates, an anesthesiologist gives the patient medicine to put them to sleep. Working together, many people work at the hospital taking care of patients. They include cleaners and nurses, paramedics and pharmacists. There are a whole lot of people who make sure that the hospital runs well so that they can take care of us. All around the world, all over the world, people need doctors to look after them. Some places don't have enough doctors and medicine. Oh, how sad is that? Through the ages, the history of medicine stretches back a long, long time ago. Even cave people had ways of treating people who were ill. Transporting the patients. In the past, sick people were moved around on horses drawn by carriages. Over a hundred years ago, ambulances with motor engines were introduced. Can you imagine if we still needed horse-drawn carriages to get us to the hospital? How exciting would that be? Medicine and broken bones. In prehistoric times, people used to use clay to set their broken bones. In ancient Egypt, they wrapped pieces of tree bark next to the broken bones to keep them straight and for them to mend. So, in prehistoric times, they used to use clay to set their broken bones. But now if you break your arm or your leg, when you go to the hospital, they will give you a cast to put around your arm or your legs.
Well, examining the body. Long ago, doctors had to use their own ears to listen to their patient's chest. A French doctor invented a stethoscope around 200 years ago. Listening through the wooden tube made sounds louder. So the first stethoscope was only a wooden tube. How far have we come since then? Being a good doctor. Becoming a doctor takes a lot of work. There are new things to learn about people all the time. But helping people in need, it makes it worthwhile. Student doctors learn how to treat patients with all kinds of illnesses. They watch how trained doctors work to prepare themselves. Doctors need to ask patients the right questions and listen to their replies. Doctors should be kind and caring with patients. Doctors look after us at every stage of our lives, from the moment that we are born till the moment that we die. Well, how important are doctors and nurses? Would you like to be a doctor and nurse maybe someday? It's a lot of hard work, but I think it's most definitely worth it if you get to help so many people in need. Molly had a dolly. Miss Molly had a dolly who was sick, sick, sick. So she called for the doctor to come quick, quick, quick. The doctor came with his bag and his hat and he knocked on the door with a rat a tat tat He looked at the dolly and he shook his head. He said, Miss Polly put her straight to bed. He wrote on his papers for some pills, pills, pills. I'll be back in the morning with my bill, bill, bill. Okay guys, let's go and have a look at what teacher Sal has to teach us today. I can't wait to see what she has to say. Good morning guys, teacher Sal here again. How are you all doing? I hope you are all well and that you had a great start to the week yesterday and that you enjoyed our first ringtime lesson of the week with our new theme, Being People Who Help. So, uh, my little doggies come to say hello. Um, so, today is Tuesday, is that right? And the Tuesday is the second day of our week. Let's count the days of the week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. There are seven days in our week. And today, Teacher Sal is going to teach you something else about another person who helps. Let's have a look who that person is. It is called, what do you think that is? Called a builder. Like Bob the Builder. And builders are very helpful in our community. Without builders, we won't have buildings. We won't have schools. We won't have homes to live in. Farms won't be built. Factories can't be built to work in. Shops can't be built. So builders are very important because they're part of construction. And construction is where we build and we make things. So I've got a lovely book to show you all about I'm a Builder. Let's have a look. What do builders do? Being a builder is an important job. Builders make and repair buildings that we use every day. Look at some of the things they do. Builders work on brand new buildings. They follow plans that architects have drawn. So an architect draws the plan, the layout of what the building is going to look like. And the builder builds it. Building new stadium takes a lot of building, builders and a lot of materials too. 
So they're the builders hard at work. Builders improve existing buildings. They can make them bigger. This house is having an extra room put at the back. So there are, they are building a bedroom. Builders repair old buildings. Over the years, roofs, walls and foundations can be damaged. Builders repair them so they stand strong and look good. So there are the builders um, repairing the building. So they do painting, they do plastering, all of that. On the building site. A building site is where a building project takes place. Lots of builders work on sites for weeks, months and sometimes even years. This is the site office where the site manager works and her job is to make sure the building is finished and it's on time. There is a building on site and there is the site manager. Daily life. Many different things go on at the building site each day. Builders use different machines and tools to carry out their jobs. Builders use a bulldozer to make a plot as flat as possible. They also mix cement and water in a concrete mixer to make concrete. There is the builder, the bulldozer, sorry, flattening the plot, the ground, and there is a concrete mixer where concrete is being made. Delivery trucks bring in timber, plasterboard and other building materials. There are the delivery trucks. They bring in wood, they bring in plaster, they can bring in bricks, whatever the builder needs. Bricklayers build solid walls using these large breeze blocks. There they are. And metal workers use nuts and bolts to put buildings in a steel frame. There's the steel frame of the building and there they are putting nuts and bolts in to keep it secure and safe. Dressed for work. Builders must dress safely for the job they do. They need to stand out on a busy site and be well protected when using machines and tools. Protective goggles. Goggles protect the builder's eyes from dust and sand and all other things. So here are the goggles that they wear. Then they wear a hard hat, a builder's hard hat, just in case stones are flying or anything hard that could fall on the builder's head. This hard hat should protect them from that. And then we've got a vest, a high visibility jacket that makes builders easy to spot. And there is the jacket. This one is bright yellow. So you can see he's in construction. And then they carry walkie talkies. And walkie talkies they use to speak to other people on construction site. The builders give instructions to other people working or they get given instructions from their site managers. Then we've got a harness. Builders wear a harness when they are working on scaffolding. The harness is like that. That keeps them strapped. So if they are working on scaffolding, that's why they're building, that harness protects them so hopefully they don't fall and hurt themselves. They wear gloves. Builders wear gloves to keep their hands warm. Often they work outside in very cold temperatures and they protect them from cuts and scrapes. Then they've got a tool belt where all their tools go. There is their belt and all their tools go in the belt. And then they've got steel-toed boots. They are very important. These boots are heavy and if anything falls on them, they won't hurt their feet. They're special steel boots for builders that they wear. And then they've got reinforced trousers. Um, they may have reinforced knee, like knee pads, 
to protect them when they're kneeling on their ground so that they don't hurt themselves. Then we've got a builder's toolbox. Let's have a look at all the things he carries. They carry their tools <coughs> in a large box. It's a big toolbox with wheels for easy to move around. They have nails, they have a spanner, they have a pencil, they have a tape measure and a screwdriver. Those are just some of the things in their toolbox. They often carry a multi-cutter. This can change the attachment of his tool to cut or scrape. <coughs> and a nail gun. This is used to firmly fix nails onto wood and materials. And then a grinder. This powerful tool is used by builders to cut through metal. So there is a multi-cutter, the nail gun and the Grinder, can you see those top three pictures? And then they've got a wood planner. Builders use this to flatten or shape pieces of wood. And a rivet gun that puts two pieces of metal together. So they carry lots of different tools, don't they? Then they need different tools for the job. Sometimes certain tools make their jobs easy like a cordless screw, a cordless drill, so in other words it doesn't plug in. These make holes for screws and bolts and it can be used anywhere because it runs on batteries. You've got a sander that sands down wood and surfaces. It creates a lot of dust so they need to wear their goggles but it makes the wood and other surfaces smooth. And then you've got a demolition hammer. This metal hammer can break through walls and that's what they use as well when they are building. And a concrete breaker. This breaks through roads and pavements. Remember construction workers, builders also make roads for us. And then we've got homes. Builders make homes for us where we live. They transform a bare patch of land into homes for families. Remember I mentioned the architect earlier? The architect is a person who makes up the plans, who drills up the plans, draws up the plans on how your home is going to look, and then the builders build according to that. And they mark foundations on the ground for where they're going to dig and build your home. And then they pour concrete into foundations from a huge lorry, just like that. They have brick layers to build the walls inside a wooden framework. And there is how your house begins. And then the bricks slowly start being built into the framework and it becomes the structure of your house. Very clever. They also pull down buildings, something called a wrecking ball. This old house is being knocked by a wrecking ball. The heavy ball swings from the crane against the walls and it crushes the house. It's very heavy and very forceful, lots of power to break down what it needs to. Then we got something called robotic demolition. Builders used remote controlled robots to pull some buildings down. And that is what that is, like a remote controlled robot. Then we've got moving machines. This is the different equipment that they use to drive, to transport things and do various things on the site. They've got a crane, so the crane can lift things high up to where it needs to go. You've got a forklift truck, this offer, which is what this is, and this can lift wood and lots and lots of bricks. And an excavator, this digs out the earth in the ground with a moving arm, which is that. And then a concrete mixer truck. We saw that earlier, mixing the concrete. 
and then we've got a bulldozer that's making bulldozing the land and moving soil around and there is the bulldozer and then working together so builders work with other people who are also very important to help make their job easier you've got a plumber so the plumber fits the water pipes and waste pipes and puts toilets and sinks together. And you can use a plumber in your home and in all sorts of other buildings. And an electrician, the electrician does electrical wiring, special wiring in your house and a light fitting so that you can see there is the electrician. And a plasterer, a plasterer smooths the plaster over the bricks to make the wall nice, flat and smooth. And then decorators, so you have decorators that come and paint your home and make it look very nice and pretty. And a carpenter puts together the doors in your home and cupboards and there is the picture of what a carpenter does so all these people work together with the builder now builders are also responsible for helping an engineer an engineer is another type of person who is responsible for designing and building bridges and roads and dams and builders will help with that and then we've got all different types of buildings that are built by builders in construction by engineers these are all famous buildings all around the world So being a good builder is very hard work. It's not for everyone. You have to be very good at your job. Builders have to be fit and strong so that they can lift heavy things and machinery. They need to be able to read the architect's plans, what the architect has drawn and designed that they build according to that. They need to have excellent coordination, especially when they're controlling machinery. And they need to be good at math. So their maths, their numbers need to be good. So that they measure out the right spaces when they are building. So a builder is very, very important, isn't it? They do lots and lots of important things. What teacher Sal thought we could do, just something fun and maybe mom and dad can do it with you. But I just thought I would make it for fun. I've taken strips of paper and measured it to fit my head, okay, like a crown. And then, because I'm going to make our builder's helmet, I've drawn a shape like this. So, sort of a half circle at the top and round for part of the hat and then straight across like that. And what I'm going to do is staple it to my hat and I will show you my how I've made my very own builder's hat. Just something fun to do and I've used a stapler just to attach it to the strips of paper to make it a helmet. And if I do that, let's just put one more stapler in. Hopefully, let's see what it looks like we go do you think that looks like a builder's hat a little bit big for me let's staple it there let's try again so teacher Sal has her own builder's hat and I think this is something that you guys could probably make yourselves so you have your own builder's hat but make sure that it fits your head so just any colored piece of paper or white paper make strips to fit around your head like a crown and then do that piece and staple it on your um, strips of paper to make your builder's helmet to make your hard hat just something fun 
and now I want to teach you a song about a builder. So, this is the way we pound the nails, pound the nails, pound the nails. This is the way we pound the nails so early in the morning. This is the way we saw the wood, saw the wood, saw the wood so early in the morning. This is the way we use a screwdriver, use a screwdriver, use a screwdriver so early in the morning. This is the way we drill a hole, drill a hole, drill a hole. This is the way we drill a hole so early in the morning. And then, this is the way we stir the paint, stir the paint, stir the paint. This is the way we stir the paint so early in the morning. And then, this is the way we paint the walls, paint the walls, paint the walls. This is the way we paint the walls so early in the morning. So the builders are very busy. I thought that was just something fun. And have any of you watched Bob the Builder? Perhaps when you were even smaller, maybe some of you still watch that. That's lots of fun, because Bob the Builder is a builder. And he works, doesn't he? Bob the Builder, doof, doof, doof. Bob the Builder, I'm sure you know that song. Maybe Mom and Dad can find that for you and you can watch some of that. That's lots of fun too. Well, I hope you enjoyed this morning's ring. I know I did. And it was lots of fun learning about what a builder does and just how important he is. Maybe some of you will be builders one day when you grow up. Remember, you need to be big and strong. Well, guys, lovely teaching you this morning. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon. And I will see you tomorrow. And tomorrow will be the third day of the week. It will be Wednesday. Bye, guys. Thanks, teacher Sal. Okay, guys, are you ready for story time? I know I am. Today's book is The Boy Who Ate Everything. But can you remember what the doctors call if you take care of our mother's teeth? You call it oral hygiene. Very good. It's a dentist. Let's see if this little boy might need a dentist if he eats everything. The most gruesome thing I ever did was when I was a little kid. I was so hungry on that day, I swallowed all that came my way. I ate some toast, I ate some cake, then I gobbled up the dinner plate. I ate some mud, I ate some ends, I ate my brother's underpants. Ugh. I ate the lady from next door, yet still I needed something more. <gasps> I thought perhaps a submarine, but then I saw... A tin of beans! At last I filled my naughty tum, then came a grumbling from my bum. I felt as though the ground was shaking, oh what noise my gut was making. Something huge was in my pipes. Oh, help! Oh, no! Oh, gosh! Oh, crops! The bottom burps so huge and loud. 
was shooting me above the clouds. Flying with such a style and grace zoom, into outer space. The body squeak went on and on until the earth was almost gone. So there I sat all on my own in silent orbit far from home. And how the heck would I get down? And then I heard another sound. From my belly came a growl, a rattle and a moan and a thumping howl. A blish. So mighty in its grinch, it sent me rushing back to earth. I landed, bump, right on my dad. My mum was fuming, streaming mad. cried in tears. You're grounded for 80 years. So please be careful what you eat. Stick to greens and fruits and meats. Recall the mess beans get you in. I think I have another tin. And that's the end of the boy who ate everything. Okay guys. That's all we have time for today. I'll see you tomorrow.